Obstructive sleep apnea occurs when the upper airways collapse, resulting in holding of the breath during sleep. After a period of time, the sleeper partially wakes up, gasping for air. This cycle of breath holding followed by gasping can occur many times an hour during sleep. In addressing obstructive sleep apnea, two factors need to be considered. The first is airway size, and the second is the amount of air that we habitually breathe. In relation to airway size, the narrower the upper airway, the greater the negative pressure as air is drawn into the lungs. Habitual mouth breathing during childhood can alter the shape of the face resulting in small or receding jaws. This reduces airway size and increases the risk of lifelong sleep apnea. As we get older, loss of muscle tone in the upper airway also contributes to holding of the breath during sleep. To help open the upper airway, it is important not to sleep on the back and also to breathe through the nose. The second consideration in obstructive sleep apnea is the amount of air that we breathe. It is very common for people to habitually breathe too much air as indicated by audible breathing often through the mouth. Heavy breathing during sleep increases negative pressure in the upper airways causing collapse. Imagine inhaling a large volume of air through a collapsible paper straw. The heavier one breathes, the greater the likelihood of the walls of the straw collapsing inwards. On the other hand, breathing light through the straw causes less negative pressure, thereby reducing the risk of collapsing the walls. Breathing re-education to reset the breathing center in the brain to a lighter breathing volume significantly reduces the occurrence of obstructive sleep apnea. Combining this with myofunctional therapy to strengthen the upper airways enhances the benefits, resulting in a significant reduction in apneas and hypopneas.